HF aerials that don't work. Have you ever come across HF aerials that don't work? Why would you ever come across an HF aerial that doesn't work? Well, some of you have clearly, and quite honestly, I get every so often a note from somebody saying, I've tried that aerial, it doesn't work. Now, when I started out in ham radio, I thought that all aerials worked. But more recently, I've come to the conclusion that perhaps I was wrong. Some aerials just don't work. Now, that's quite a bold statement to make, isn't it, that uh, some HF aerials don't work? I mean, to be perfectly honest, anything will work as an aerial. A six-inch nail will work as an aerial. A light bulb will work as an aerial. I know that because I tried that many years ago. That was our dummy loads. But when I say some HF aerials don't work, what I mean to say is they don't seem to perform as others claim they will perform. You know, you can put an aerial into a radio and you can have a QSO. And you'll, you have several QSOs with that aerial, it works. But you start to realise after a little while that it didn't work or doesn't work as well as the aerial you had up before. Now there is a caveat here that you've got to allow for radio conditions. Radio conditions are never stable. And so if you put up a new aerial one day and try it and you think, oh, it's marvellous. It may not be as marvellous as you think. Or conversely, you put up an aerial and you think it's absolute rubbish. But it may not be as much rubbish as you think because conditions have changed. The only way to really check out an antenna and its performance is to give it an extended test. But, and there's a big but, even after extended tests, I've found that some aerials are not as good as you'd expect them to be. And from correspondence I've had from other ham radio operators, they also agree that some aerials are not quite as good as they thought they should be. Now, is it a fact? Well, yes, it is a fact, but I think we need to explore it a bit more than just blandly say, oh, this aerial doesn't work, or that aerial is marvellous. So let's go into it in a bit more depth. One of the problems we have is that with antennas, there's so many variables, variables that we don't have any control over. And I'm talking about geographical uh, situations where we're located uh, in the world and uh, closer to home what we've got around us what is surrounding us we, we know that any aerial that we erect is going to be affected by the ground beneath it in fact we depend upon the ground beneath it to give us sort of the aerial performance that we expect but unfortunately that ground beneath us is also very variable and so with all those variables, it's very difficult to predict how well an antenna is going to work and probably more importantly, whether it's going to work in your location. Now, I have uh, contacts uh, on a fairly regular basis with Brian ZL3XDJ in New Zealand. And uh, we have completely different aerial systems both of which we reckon are best for where we are. But mine is totally different from Brian's. And I've actually tried to replicate what Brian uses, and for me, it just doesn't really work. Now, I can't tell you why that is. It is a fact. And it really sort of throws a question up about, should we really be depending too much on antenna modeling software? Because as good as it is in terms of what it produces, it doesn't always tell you the truth. Now, an extract here from Brian, one of Brian's videos about a year ago that he did. So, today's test, and, and again, as people who, who know me, 
Um, yeah, it's easy to go on the computer and look at all the various antenna software and see what might happen but I like to just get out in the field and experiment and then get um, get, get proper true um, results on the air uh, without having to uh, look through all the software in the first place. So software tells you what should happen in theory but it doesn't tell you what will happen in practice and sometimes there can be a very big difference between those two situations. But its antenna system is very simple. Listen to his explanation on what he's using on 20 metres, for example. So basically what we've got is um, we've got a five metre pole, which is, um, which is just um, up against a, a bush here. And it's got a, um, a couple of um, fishing wire just tied from the pole to the bush. We've got a 5.1 um, five, yeah, 5 5.1 piece of um, radiating wire going up the pole uh, just here and down at the bottom um, we've got um, a basic connector with the wire coming down goes to the center of the coax coax um, with ferrite clamps I tend to find ferrite clamps work just as well as a one-to-one -one ballon and, um, and at, the, at the bottom just underneath um, this is where we, uh, the earth side, is where we simply have uh, alligator clips to, um, to fasten on the radials. So, as you can see, Brian uses a very simple system and it works extremely well. He tells me he has tried a horizontal uh, system, dipoles, etc., but that doesn't seem to give him the same performance as he gets with his vertical. So, let's now see my perspective on working across to the other side of the world. In other words, talking back to Brian in New Zealand. Well, by strict contrast, the system that I use when I've been talking to Brian in New Zealand, and it's a system which I installed about two years ago, thinking it was just going to be temporary, well, it's still up and it's still working. Believe it or not, it's a half-size G5 RV. Uh, it's not very high. I'll show you now. It's around about uh, 25 feet above the ground, so it's typical sort of installation. And it's obviously fed with open wire feeder. And at the base of the uh, antenna where it uh, converts from 450 ohm to coax, I've got a ferrite core. Um, I know Brian uses clamps, but uh, I've used the ferrite core. And I agree with Brian that the ferrite core is just as good as a uh, ballon. Now the next shock is that I'm feeding it with RG58 coax. Not the lowest loss coax. I've got a run of around about 50 feet, I suppose. So what I'm using is perhaps a sort of basic installation. As far as the half size 5RV is concerned, there's not really any gain on 20 meters. Um, so uh, there's uh, nothing really to be gained there. But I have actually also got a vertical in the garden. And this vertical I've had for about five years in the garden here. It's the Hustler uh, uh, 4BTV, covers 10, 15, 20 and 40 meters. And it works reasonably well, but it doesn't match up to the half-size G5 RV. Now, why is that? Because we know that a vertical has low angle radiation, and uh, it certainly doesn't favor high angle radiation because if I operate on uh, 20 meters or 40 meters, um, local contacts are way down. When I say local contacts on 40 meters, sort of a you know three or four hundred miles, they're way down um, in signal strength. On 20 meters, um, longer distances like I don't know Germany um, uh, into Sweden to Denmark, um, and even into uh, um, the western uh, parts of Russia, um, signals are way down, and. Uh, 
there's also an increase in noise level, but well, that's a different matter. I've already covered noise level and verticals. So my vertical is not particularly good uh, for short, short distance contacts. And that's what you would expect. But the mystery is that it's also not so wonderful for, for, for long distance contacts. Um, certainly when I'm working um, Brian in New Zealand, when I switch to the vertical, I'm down about one to two S points. Doesn't make sense, does it? With a low angle horizontal antenna. It's defying logic. Now, just for those that may uh, sort of query, or perhaps it's, it's the 4B TV, I've erected a full size uh, quarter wave vertical in the garden with radials and I can detect no improvement. So I'm quite happy with the way that this um, uh, 4B TV works. Now the 4B TV behind me, vertical antenna, should work pretty well for lowering your radiation, but as I said, it doesn't. I can get an improvement by raising the radials off the ground, but even that doesn't come near to the humble half size G5 RV. Now, I'm sure there's many of you out there that have found yourself in a similar position. You've got an aerial that doesn't really work as well as you hoped it would work, or it's not as good as uh, other people claim it to be. And then you've got another aerial which you find works extremely well. Now, sometimes there's no obvious reason for this. You clearly have found that a particular aerial works well and another particular aerial for you doesn't work. Now, I firmly believe that there's a reason for everything. The problem we have with some of these situations <laughs> is that we don't actually find out what the problem is. Where, where do we start? And perhaps we shouldn't worry about it. I mean, Earlier I showed you a, a, a clip from Brian, a ZL3X uh, DJ. Now, he has got a very good antenna system. It didn't cost him much at all. It works extremely well. And he has found that for whatever reason, that's best for him. Now, I do know that he lives near the coast, but I don't think he lives close enough to the coast um, for him to get that sort of magic salt water boost you get. Um, I think to get a salt water boost you've got to be right on the edge of the uh, the water. So that can't be the reason. Could it be that his ground there is so much different from mine? Well, I find it hard to, to, to believe that but perhaps it is. I don't know. I don't know what his garden is like or what the ground's like. But the, the fact is that he has got an antenna system that works well and that sort of system he's got doesn't work well for me. Maybe it's a southern hemisphere. He did say that um, uh, uh, most of the stations he works in the northern hemisphere have got horizontal antennas. Is it possible that the southern hemisphere um, has a different sort of propagation component that we don't know about? I don't think so. And then we come back to my situation. Why is a low, of what is effectively a doublet, a low doublet at 25 feet, why is that so much better than a vertical? The, there is no obvious reason, but you can ponder. I mean, I, I live on a ridge here and I've got sloping ground to the north, to the northwest and to the east. Now, sloping ground gives a boost, and I firmly believe that I do get benefit from that sloping ground. And therefore, the fact that I've got a 25 foot doublet um, on a ridge with sloping ground um, in some directions does give benefit. But it doesn't actually completely answer the, uh, the reason why, because I have got rising ground um, to the uh, west and to the southwest. Now the southwest is the long path to uh, Australia. And um, I find that I get very good results. They'll work 
Brian, ZL3XDJ. I've got no benefit from sloping ground there. In fact, I've got a bit of rising ground. So that really is not the reason. And then look at the vertical. Why is the vertical down so much? We know that verticals give low angle radiation. I mean, it's been proved time and time again. But I did publish a video recently and I sort of posed the question, are we actually getting the really low angle radiation that we think we're getting? I don't think we are. Um, I, I, I talked about the, the sort of pseudo Brewster effect, the cancellation of very low angle waves from a vertical antenna. Um, that would have an effect. But it's not the full story. And the truth of the matter is, I don't know why. But because I don't know why, I feel that I'm not unique in this situation. In fact, I know I'm not because I get, say, lots of uh, comments from uh, people that watch this channel and, and get emails and that. And, and you know, they come up and say, well, Peter, um, I've got this, it's just a length of wire that goes down the garden over a metal roof and it works wonderfully well. And clearly it does for them, for that situation. So I think what we have to accept is that we're amateur operators and we experiment. And it's through experimentation that we find these things. I think a lot, a lot of the um, differences that we experience is because of our location, our particular geographic location and things around us. Things that we perhaps don't think have much effect on our signal, but do. And that probably is the easiest way to explain why somebody somewhere has a great area and it doesn't work in somebody else's garden because it's a different geographical location. There's, there's houses, there's buildings, there's high rise buildings, there's trees, there's different soil, all these sort of things factor in to affect the performance of an area. So if you're a newcomer, I hope I haven't put you off. Um, do give, uh, do, do try different aerials and see how you get on. Don't make the mistake of trying it for 24 hours and thinking, oh, it's, it's no good or it's better than the other one. You do need sort of long term tests. But I hope that it gives you some encouragement to experiment with antennas. And whilst software, uh, whilst, whilst, whilst modeling software is very, very good, it, I mean, it's, it's very, very powerful. Unfortunately, it doesn't always tell you the truth for your particular location. So don't be frightened to experiment. So there we are. That's my uh, my topic for this uh, this week. <laughs> some aerials don't work and uh, some aerials do work. But the aerials that don't work for you might work for somebody else. And the aerials that um, uh, do work for you, um, blah, 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 you know. So, so basically, don't be frightened to experiment. Thanks for watching this video channel. Much appreciated. Thanks for your support. Don't forget to subscribe, of course. And... Um, we were, I think we're nearly up to 30,000 uh, subscribers, so that's pretty good, isn't it? And don't forget, of course, that um, we've got uh, all the um, the um, popular uh, radios in stock, uh, transceivers, receivers, we've got a wide range of aerials, wide range of accessories. I mean, we've got loads and loads of accessories. If you're looking for something in particular and you can't find it, just pick up the phone and speak to one of the guys. They'll be happy to help you. In the meantime, you enjoy your ham radio. You take care. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.